All right, welcome everybody to today's office hours. My name is Mark Stepp and we are here today to talk about agent branding and uh, with me today, I have Kendra. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Mark Stepp. Like I said, I am the chief innovation officer. I, I, I talk about this every time. It's really the reason why I'm here is to help you guys with the why. Why, why technology? How do you use technology? And you know why we do what we do within Real Ball. Uh, Kendra is more of the person that that actually gets in there and, and does it with you, and and does the um, the processes and stuff in the navigator as a navigator uh, team member. She will go in there and help agents on a daily basis with uh, the the things that they do every day and making sure that they get the uh, the processes, the, the content, and, and everything set up just right. So, uh, Kendra, go ahead and I kind of stole your thunder, I think, there, but um, <laughs> introduce yourself. Uh, uh, of course. Um, for those of you that do not know who I am, my name is Kendra Rouse, and like Mark was saying, um, I and my fellow navigators, we work with you. We think about your systems and the processes and the things that you're doing every day and talk about how we can take those things, um, build them into systems and processes and into software and to real evolve and, and make sure that all of your systems are integrated and, and operational in a way that's efficient and working best for you. Um, so, as Mark was saying today, we're going to be talking about our agent branding workflow. So, what does that look like? The last few weeks, we've been talking about um, turning your database into dollars and kind of we're going to review some of those basics and take a look at, you know, where agent branding falls into all of this and kind of how you should, you know, um, structure everything or kind of take, you know, one bite out of the cake at time and where does agent branding fit into that. Um, we'll also be talking about how you can get additional help and support, premium services, and then we're going to be giving you a copy of our agent branding workflow today so that you can work on that, customize it, um, and make sure that you kind of have these best practices in your um, processes. Um, want to make sure that we remind you any of these office hours that we're doing are on Facebook forward slash groups forward slash real vol. They're all posted there. They're also under YouTube under an office hour folder, I believe, right? Under real Vol's page. Uh, um, so correct. Yeah. And I'll put a link of the, in that in the chat here in just a second. Okay. Um, so I would encourage you to check out, you know, Facebook or YouTube for those previous recordings, because there's a lot of different topics there, right? So depending on where you're at, you probably need to be focusing on different things. And so um, a lot of different subjects to kind of um, make sure that you take a look at and, and get the training that you need. All right. So with agent branding, um, you know, it, it really resonates with me. If you're not standing out, you're blending in. There is so much noise in real estate. It is unbelievable. And agents get inundated with not only what to do and how to do it and when to do it. You know, there's no lack of decisions that you can be making in your in your systems, in your processes and what you're doing. And oftentimes you just find yourself kind of doing what you need to do in the day to day. So we really want to just get away from doing the things that I know I have to do today and, and really focus on what should I be doing? What is a more systematized approach that builds my business long-term and doesn't just deal with the noise that's in front of me right now? So agent branding is all about um, making yourself stand out, um, you know, in, in a noisy place so that you are the go-to agents because people have no lack of choices um, when it comes to agents. So how do you position yourself so that you, that you stand out and that you seem, you know, professional and, and the right choice? Um, you know, and so really taking away researching before you act and then, you know, creating a workflow that systematically reminds you of the important steps that you need to take. So really being intentional with what you want to be doing. Um, and, you know, a couple of things we're going to talk about is just identifying your target uh, client and your audience and, you know, performing a real estate competitor analysis. So what does that mean? You can't go after everybody. OK, and so there's several things that you want to do. So who is your market? You can take a demographic approach and maybe it's everybody within a zip code. Maybe it's a certain target market. I know when, um, you know, I was selling real estate, I still have my real estate license, but I'm. Um, prior military myself and right in between two military bases. And so one of my target audiences was, um, you know, military people because I understood them and I wanted to work with them and things like that. 
So you're really identifying, you can go after demographics, you can go after, um, like I said, areas, you can go after price points, but you're not going after everybody. And that's really the, the takeaway from there. So you're kind of really intentionally thinking about the things that you want to be doing. You're thinking about who you want to work with and what you want to look like to those people. Because the second part about that is you're going to put a branding face out to the world, okay? So what type of agent do you want to present? And part of that, I think, takes um, in crafting that story, it takes you taking a look at the competitors around you, okay? So, you know, who is your competitor now is not going to be your competitor in five years because, you know, people come in and out of the industry and you want to make sure that that you're paying attention to those other people that you're competing against so that you stand out um, above them and that you become the obvious choice for people to want to work with. Um, and putting those systems into Realvolve and having um, tasks that remind you to create and to update and to be very intentional with the things that you've chosen to do will help you do that. Yeah, I like one of the things going back to the target market is making sure that if you've not read the book, uh, Blue Ocean, you know, really making sure that you're not swimming amongst the other sharks in the in the arena, uh, per se, and and having in that red ocean where there's lots of, you know, uh, blood and guts, I guess, all the things that that agents do and and being another agent in your in your area. Focus on something that is so specific that you're in your own little ocean and and you don't have to fight over everybody. Mm -hmm. And I really like to take, um, you know, a look at it from the opposite way. And so sometimes you're thinking, well, you know, how can I get myself in front of that person? I think it helps to kind of reverse that and say, what could other people do to get in front of me? Right, asking yourself when you drive by a billboard, was that a billboard that you paid attention to, or did you just drive by it and not notice it? You know, um, are you noticing certain ads on on social media or certain things catching out to you? These are the things that you should be kind of if you flip that that script and think about the things that, that come into your noise. Those are going to come into other people's noise and an excellent takeaway from uh, the things that you should be you know wanting to do. Um. So going back to focusing on priorities, I think that it really helps for agents to be very intentional. And I talked about, you know, the last things about who are you going after? How are you going to go after it? What is your brand? Because those decisions need to be made, um, you know, in a very high level um, thought process. And even one of those things can be a daunting thing for somebody to, you know, take into account or whatever. Um, but it goes along several things. In the last few times that we've been talking, we were talking about turning your database into dollars. What, the day that you had your real estate license, you started working with somebody, you're presenting a brand. You do it with how you present yourself, the, the things that you offer, your marketing materials, all of those things. So too often, in my opinion, agents, they don't see the line between transactional and branding, okay? And so if you've done any business at all, you, there are certain things that you have to be doing. Um, you have to be answering emails. You have to be, if you go under contract, sending an email out. Um, you have to be maintaining relationships with your clients, okay? All of those things, transactional and relationship building are the things that we've been talking about the last few um, weeks. And in my opinion, in terms of prioritizing things, we wanna make sure that we really kind of grasp those last concepts that we did and that you're also always continuously um, working on your branding. Because if you start a transaction, you go under contract, it kind of has a life cycle, okay? Maybe it's 45 days in your market. That runs completely separately than your branding, what you're doing to build yourself as an agent. That's going to be all the time. But in terms of building or designing what that's going to look like and doing it in a very intentional way, it runs completely separate from this transaction um, time. So the agent branding workflow really is intentional on saying, yes, in the day to day, you're focused on all of these things to, you know, dollar productive activities to turn a client into, um, you know, to turn a lead into a client, into a transaction, into a paycheck but also the importance of these branding things that are going to build you as the go-to agent over time. Um, so we can kind of run those effectively, but 
in my opinion, you really want to make sure that that you're managing your current listings and your transactions um, efficiently and effectively. And you're doing that by making sure that you have uh, listing workflows, that you have transaction workflows. So, you know, do you have a process in place when you put when a seller, you know, a seller is committed to listing with you? Are you going into Realvolve and starting a pre-MLS workflow? Are you starting an active workflow when that person goes on the market? And once that seller goes under contract, are they going on a contract to close workflow that manages the process through closing? And then do you have a good follow up campaign to make sure that you maintain that relationship that you work so hard to establish with that seller? OK, if you're doing business at all, that that should be a top priority. You know, with that buyer, are you making sure that you um, I, I can tell you a few times, you know, just spinning all wheels to make sure something lands in the, you know, the basket it that happens right so you know you don't want to get in a place where you've showed a buyer a couple of houses and then you realize you haven't talked to them in three weeks and you find out they're under contract with someone else so we need to be managing the business that you're doing and we're doing that with contact workflows with listing workflows with transaction workflows um so really taking a look at do you have those processes in place um do you have your leads coming into realvolve with you know multiple lead source funnels actively running? Have you been, you know, intentional with what types of leads that you're going to go after? And part of this can go back to branding, right? Because those funnels are interconnected with your branding because you've decided that you're going to target this certain market. Okay. So once you've identified that market, how are you going after them? How are you getting in front of them? That's your branding. That's what you're doing to make yourself in the public view. But transactionally, you're talking about what are you doing when you capture that lead and then you funnel them into Realvolve and do you have a plan in place with them that ultimately gets them from a lead into a client, into a closed transaction. This is all important, okay? And so when you look at it as the overview, you can say, oh, this is daunting. But it's really the important part of it is just chunking it out, right? Understanding that there's a there's a process and there's a place to do it. And um, it all goes back, in my opinion, to identifying your need. And if you're like, I, you know, where do I begin? And a lot of agents, brand new agents, they want to go out and, you know, purchase a billboard or something. And I'm just, you know, making that up or whatever. Is that your biggest need? You know, probably not. Um, but identifying the things that are your current pain points. And sometimes that's transactions. If, if you know that you're living, you're managing your transactions through responding to emails, then you may want to start there. You know, what are the things that are taking up your time? Um, and then, you know, are you nurturing and building relationships every weekday? I can't understate the importance of this. And we've talked a lot about using that contact cross section to do that. And, um, you know, contact management workflows that we have. But today we're going to be talking about agent brand. Okay. So I really just want you to think about the things that we went over the last two weeks as your transaction management, as your process management. And you're really thinking about your branding as something you as an agent should be doing to, to build your face, your real estate face, so that um, people know who you are and that you stand out from the crowd. Kendra, one of the things that I have heard over and over again, and, and I'm sure that even some of the listeners are in the same situation at times is just the volatility of the market and how we have, you know, feast or famine times. And and while there are seasonality uh, influences in things that, that happen, many times it is a matter of not having the processes in place, like you were saying, all the listing and and uh, operations piece in place. Um, and whenever leads are coming in, there are times when if you don't have those operational pieces in place that you neglect the, the leads. Well, if you neglect the leads now, 90 days, 45 days, 90 days from now, those leads won't be there. And now you're, you're, you're hunting for leads where if you're spending all your time doing just leads, then it lets your operations go down. So there's a, what I like to describe kind of a, a wave effect of the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of everything that's in your business. And the goal of automation 
is really to reduce that wave to be much more common. It's not going to be calm. Things just happen. But if you've got the processes in place for your operations, you don't have to worry about that as much. You still have to worry about it. Um, but if you also put the branding piece in place, whenever you're dealing with your operations, the branding works itself and, and the things that you're going to show today. And, and I think that's just so important for agents to realize that what you do today affects what you, what's going to happen 45, 90 days from now. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what's. Yeah, so many thoughts on that because agents get um, wrapped up in what they have to do today and not what they should be doing. And the whole goal is if we can get your transaction stuff right, all the things that are taking up the time right now, if we can get those systematized and automate them and have those emails write themselves practically, then it frees up the time for you to think about the higher level operations of what you should be doing. And so many agents don't get to this point. Um, so. Exactly. Again, you know, we're we have an entire team in our in our thing. So, you know, if you guys have questions on, you know, if you need help or direction or anything like that, email me, Kendra at realvolve.com. Um, the other thing I would say to that, and I think how this ties into agent branding when you're talking about how real estate goes through cycles, it does. And, you know, I'm um, business management background, but I took a lot, you know, two graphs. Okay. If I did my business and I took a, a snapshot of the last year of, of where I did business, obviously we've been going through some things the last few years and, um, you know, had some kind of different markets. But if you take a statistical look at what you're doing as an agent and you can see, you know, what months you typically perform in, and then you take a look at those same statistics from your entire market, they may be different. And the market itself goes through things. So you want to think about People want to sell in the summer if they have kids and they need to move or, you know, is do you work in an area where they're, you know, hiring at a certain time? Those things you want to take into account with your branding because you can anticipate those things, right? So, you know, if your summer months are busiest because everybody wants to move in the summer, maybe we should design your agent branding workflow so that we have more of those project activities in the time where you can anticipate that you're going to have those downtimes. Those downtimes are completely different than you being exhausted downtimes, because I always think about an agent that works on a conveyor belt, okay? And an agent just says, here's your license. They just want to work at an, an, an auto manufacturer where, you know, they make the part, then they put the part together, then they assemble the part, then they test drive the car, and then they drive it to the lot. Then they're the salesperson that sells the car, and then they go back and they're making another part. You can only do that loop so long before you're tired, you're tired. And then you suffer, your money suffers, your clients suffer, you don't have the passion that you used to have. And so if you do not take a systematized approach at um, how you get your leads, what kind of leads you're getting, how they get into the system, what you're doing with them, how you process them, how you manage your transactions and the overview of how you brand yourself, then you cannot have that you know, that success without that unhealthy cycle, in my opinion. Exactly. So some of the things we're going to be talking about today, um, the whole goal is just to stay top of mind, okay? These are the things, like I said, outside of you working with a specific agent or a client or a transaction, this is how you are positioning yourself to the world. What am I doing to stay top of mind? So you know, just reminders to update your online profiles. Can't tell you how many times I have seen agents. And I'm like, they do not look like that at all. This is a 15 year old picture, you know? So, you know, when's the last glamour time you shots. updated in your bio? What's that, Mark? The glamour shots. The glamour shot. Um, you know, are, are you being very intentional about how you're positioning yourself to the world? Um, what does your photo say about you? You know, do you want to change that every so often so that people did you think about this? If somebody's only looking at you through a photo, should that photo not be updated periodically? Should it not present the best, you know, you that you want to present? So just being very intentional about what you're presenting. Um, being active online, you know, just posting online and showing that that you are um, an active agent and that you have knowledge to share with people. Local community engagement, you know, this could be a lead source. Okay. So 
um, you know, if, if you're going to an event once a week, um, I'll age myself, but I go to bingo once a week. You are around a community of people. Okay. So think about the things that you're doing to already engage yourself with your public. I'm surrounded by 60 to 80 people every week that I already talk to. What am I doing to, do they know that I'm an agent? Do they know that I can help them should they need to sell their house? So all of these things are, you are already presenting yourself to the world, but taking an intentional way of, of looking at it on how you're doing it and are you branding yourself in a certain way? Another way could be creating educational content. Um, and this could be as simple as when your client goes under contract, you give them the 15 things a seller needs to do before they sell their house. And you've created a video to walk them through their next steps. That is different than just emailing them a copy and say, hey, we're under contract. Okay. But just being very intentional on what you're doing and how you're doing it is also a source of branding. Um, we're going to talk about newsletters and sending holiday emails through the system. All of these things can be handled through an agent branding workflow so that, um, that one, you know, so that you don't forget to do them and that you're doing them in a very intentional and systematized way. All right, so let's take a look at Realvolve. Anything else on that, um, on that, Mark, before we jump into the workflow? Yeah. Um... We will be covering some of these ideas tomorrow in a um, chat GPT open AI uh, webinar that I'm doing and just talking about what you can use chat GPT for. And then, you know, some of the content that you create, the blog articles, the videos, the all the educational content that you create. Those are things that you can have open AI and chat GPT give you ideas for you know if you're not that there's a shortage of ideas but you know a lot of creative content can be made very quickly and easily now with the the advent of of ai and definitely use it and we'll be talking about that in our webinar tomorrow awesome uh where's that webinar posted at um i that's a great question. Um, I will make sure that it's in our Facebook community. I know that there was a bunch of emails that went out. Sam posted those last week. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so take a look at Facebook um, to get more information on that webinar. So before we jump into our agent branding workflow, I really kind of want you guys to think about where these types of workflows live or how they work, okay? So typically we break everything down into three buckets, contact, property, or transaction. When you think about contact workflows, typically you're thinking about workflows that are launched on individuals that are nurturing or doing certain things to that individual. I wanna turn a lead into a client. I wanna maintain a relationship with a client. Those contact workflows typically are managing that relationship your listing workflows are managing, you know, upcoming and current listings until they go under contract. And your transaction workflows are handling everything once they go under contract and through the day of closing. Sometimes, you know, six months past closing, depending on how we set that up to make sure that everything transactionally is taken care of. Certain workflows like agent branding, some of our event workflows, like if you're doing pies or you have a summer event or a um, a holiday party or things like that fall under the same kind of branding workflow, um, your um, holiday workflow. All of these are not going to be started on individual clients. And if you really think about it, it doesn't really make sense to do that. You are not doing anything one on one. OK, so for these types of workflows that cover a bright, broader spectrum, we are going to actually launch them on ourselves. And so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my contact record. And I did that by searching my name in the top left. And over here on the left, I see that this is the account that is associated. I'm sorry, this is the contact record that is associated with my account because it has this head icon here, okay? If I had accidentally created two, like we have Kendra Test, this could say Kendra Rouse and Kendra Rouse. If there were two of me, this one doesn't have a head icon. It's pretty clear that this one's not associated with my account. So I want to choose the one with the head icon. Now, if I came in here and I did a search for Kendra and there were a bunch of them, I can use this drop down in the top left to kind of funnel down because by default, it's searching for everything. But I do have the option to tell the system only look for name, only look for email, phone, address, um, and company. 
And so maybe, you know, I just want to see Kendra's by name. And so if I do that, then it's going to funnel down and show me that. So just be careful if you're in this and you want to go back to a global search that you've reset your criteria. Once I have found my contact record, I'm going to click into it and I'm going to launch my workflow. We're going to take a look at how this workflow is set up, but I want you to understand how it works. So when I launch agent branding, I'm launching it on myself one time. Typically this workflow will have recurring activities, okay? So I'm probably gonna refresh or update my online profiles every so often. And so what it's gonna do when I launch this workflow is it's gonna create a series of activities assigned to myself. So I know that if I am managing um, holiday workflows, branding workflows, event workflows, things like that, I can always come to my contact record and my activities, and I can see those things that I've launched. I can see that um, that this workflow is from this agent branding. I can also stop it or adjust it if I need to. Um, and just knowing that you're going to launch that one time on yourself. So let's take a look at how we set that up. So if I click on workflows, and again, um, if you're on this call today, then we'll give you this workflow, which you can adjust or, you know, edit as needed. Um, but as it is, it is a contact workflow because it is launched on you that one time. The, the important, I cannot stress the importance of one time. <laughs> um, if you have any kind of workflow that's based off of tags, um, is, is even more important. And I don't know if this one is or not, but you know, typically you want to make sure that you don't run this multiple times. Otherwise, you're going to get the same activity multiple times uh, for different people. So just be cautious of that. Yeah. And if you could, um, while we're doing this, I would I would love for everybody to put one thing in the chat that they're doing currently to brand themselves. Um, I would love to see some some ideas of what you guys are currently doing, or even if you would like to see how, you know, that that would look inside of an activity. Um, I'll build out an activity to kind of show you, and I'm going to go through and, and show you what's in this template um, and how you can customize it and change it so that it works for you. Also, I'd remind you if you guys have questions as we're going through things, just to um, to ask them either in chat or, or just speak up. I'm happy to answer them as I go through this. So... The, each one of these activities right now is, is currently assigned to the agent. Um, just kind of by default, we do agents, we do, we assign tasks to roles rather than individuals because sometimes they change, okay? And it may be your process that you as the agent are not doing these things. Maybe you have decided that you're going to have an assistant is the one that is responsible for updating and refreshing these online profiles. And it's okay to have multiple roles. What's gonna happen is when you go into your contact record and you go to start this workflow, it's gonna say, who is the assistant? Who is the agent? And you can identify those things. So the downside to saying, you know, Lisa is my assistant is that what if one day Lisa isn't my assistant and now it's Jane, okay? And I've created a whole new profile for Jane. The system thinks Lisa should be doing this um, and now it's, it's Jane. And so by creating or assigning activities to roles, then we can be very conscious that those roles may change in the future. The same thing with agents. If you ever intend on building a team or doing anything else and you want other people, I think next week we're going to be talking about building a team. And um, let's say that you intend on letting your agents use this workflow, okay? Here's an agent branding workflow agent. Launch it on yourself but you've came in and you assigned all of the tasks to yourself. If that agent launches that workflow on themselves and you have assigned it directly to you, you have now all of their tasks that they have assigned to you. And I don't think you wanna do that. So just saying who should be doing this and allowing that choice to be made um, inside of the system is, is super helpful. Um, this schedule is zero days after um, start date, which is the default, meaning that we want this to happen right away. Okay, I can come in and I can prioritize things that are happening on the same day. As you can see here, I have a ton of things that are happening right when I launch this workflow. 
So if I open one of these tasks, this drop down with the one, two, three, four, I can be very intentional on which thing I want to see first. And it may not matter. Okay. So in this case, I put number ones next to post um, to Facebook business page and also to refreshing um, the online profiles. So the system's not giving priority to one of the other things. But if I said, you know, refreshing my online profile um, is less than, you know, I need to see the other activity first. I could say, take this from a one to a two. And so even though these two things are scheduled at the same time, the system's gonna prioritize the ones over the twos. Um, same with priority, right? Um, Mark, inside of the calendar view, high priority would be filtered first? Absolutely, yeah. Technically it goes priority and then order. So any of your high, anything that's it's organized by high, it will go first and then the numbers below that. So you could have a high one or a high two, but anything that's high is, is going to be at the top of your list on your calendar whenever you view it in the calendar view. Yeah, and as far as, as priority is concerned, um, I do not have to assign a priority, an order, a color, anything like that. I don't have to do that for this activity to show up and just, you know, tell me to complete this checklist as soon as I start this workflow. But it's important to note, especially as you get proficient in the system, that you have that ability to make some very... Um, um, micro level decisions on how things are going to look or how things are going to work. So, for instance, if I um, I assign time frames to my colors and my priorities. So, when we had a transaction coordinator working out of Realvolve, a high priority had to be done within 24 business hours. Um, so, for transactional stuff, and we had time assignments based off of priority and color, so that that person know knew what to prioritize um, and what to do first and when they were expected to do it to prioritize those things that you know didn't matter if it was a day or two um, before they got done they just needed to be done um inside of of our activities we're going to go over a few of these but i want to take a um a look at this checklist and so inside of this workflow that i launched did i stop it no all right so this activity here Update, refresh online profile activity, zero days after start. Inside the description here, it says update your URLs to your contact record page. Um, and that's because, and I'll bring this out. So inside this checklist item, these are clickable links. And as you can see right now, if you click on this link, this link is telling you to go to facebook.com. So what this description is doing is telling you when you get this agent branding workflow, you want to replace this part of this with your Facebook link. Because right now what this actually looks like live is if I click here to complete this, not only are these checklist items that I can mark off as done, but they're actually clickable links. And so if I click on this Facebook business, it's going to throw me over to Facebook, but it's just throwing me to, you know, facebook.com. And so if I need to customize this and tell the system what Facebook page I want to see or to retarget this to my Google business page or my Instagram or my Twitter, all I need to do is replace this URL um, and to update that clickable link. So on here, we have a reminder starting um, zero days after. This should actually be repeating. I think it was every year. I'm not sure. Um, and then again, all these are decisions that you're going to have to make. So what this is saying here is every year or however often that you decide that you want to take a look in terms of do I need to update my information? Can this page use the refresh? So this task comes up and it says, hey, Go to each one of these places and update your information. We have set it up so that it's a clickable link. When you click on it, it will actually open that page for you so that you can take a look at it, update it there. Once you've done that, you can check off that you've done it. Now, if you do not, if this is not applicable for some reason, double clicking on it is going to indicate that it's not applicable. But more than likely in this instance, if it's not applicable, it probably doesn't need to be in this checklist. And so I can come in here and I can click on this X and I can get rid of certain things. I can also click here on the left and I can reorder them in whatever order I want them. And I can also add things, right? So 
if there's another website that you would be checking in terms of, of your profiles or the things that you would be updating periodically, you can add additional things and kind of tweak this um, template that we're giving you. Now over here under repeat, by default, your repeat is none. Okay, so that means if I check off this activity, it's one, it's done, it's good to go. Something specifically with branding workflows, they're probably going to be repeating. And you're really thinking about when do I want them to repeat? And so in this case, I've used the example of once a year. And so I can change daily, Monday through Friday, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every Tuesday, weekly, monthly, and like I said, yearly. When I select yearly, I also have the chance or the, the option to change. Maybe I only want to do this every two years. And so I can say, repeat this task every two years and end this never. If I said end this after 20 occurrences, then that's 40 years. Okay. So that makes this task pop up once every two years, 20 times, ultimately in 40 years. Now, when you go down to weekly, you have a little bit different or more options on when they repeat. And so you can select things to repeat on certain days so that you're excluding your weekends and hopefully working towards getting those off. And then again, something like this branding probably would not end because it's a good idea just to keep those profiles refreshed periodically over time. Anything you want to add on that, Mark? Nope, not so far. You're doing great. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that we have on here. We're refreshing our online profiles. We're posting to our business page. We're posting to Instagram and Twitter, to LinkedIn, to, to local groups. Um, door knocking, if that's not your thing, you want to get that out of here. Um, and you also have the ability to, to add additional you know, things. So again, thinking about what is in here that you're currently doing that you would like to be doing, um, and then you know setting it up so that that it works for you. Um, and then also at the bottom, adding any additional activities that you would like to be doing that are not in here. One of the things that we have in here is editing and sending out the newsletter. We are intentional on when we're doing this because Real Evolve, if you have your newsletter included, you're probably getting an email right now about the 15th of every month with your code to install your newsletter. Um, we talked about how to install that newsletter last week. I think it was turning your data into dollars part two. There's a breakdown on how you handle that newsletter. But this task is specifically reminding you to edit that newsletter. So, you know, you probably, a lot of people are working off of that email as a trigger to come in and, and do that. But this is actually creating a task that is reminding you um, monthly to, to update that. And then more so, we, in, if you remember inside of that newsletter, there's a just listed, just sold. So this is reminding whoever is responsible for completing this activity that they should take a look at that section of the newsletter and update to your current just listed and your current just sold and update your social icons so that they direct to your social icons and not just facebook.com. And some people say, well, this is, I just remember to do this stuff. Okay. So I would challenge you to say, I want you to be busy enough that you don't remember to do this stuff. Or I want your intent to be or question, will you ever offboard this to someone else and have them do it? And I promise you, if you take the time to make more detailed activities with checklists and descriptions and things like that, where you're giving the people that ultimately will be doing this an admin and assistant in the future, the information that they need to do it, it gets off your plate. And so just if you say, hey, I need you to you send an email today and says, hey, I need you to edit the monthly newspaper or newsletter today, um, update the just sold, just listed, you know, do this. And you're explaining to them on the 20th of every month. One, it's probably not going to be on the 20th of the month when you remember. Two, the time that you took out to explain that is wasted time and, and times that could be, um, you know, used on other more valuable dollar productive activities. Um, yeah, so I, I, was in a, yeah. I was in a, uh, a clubhouse uh, conversation uh, a week or so ago, and one of the one of the agents said, "I just hired an assistant. What should I have her do?" And it's like, "Oh my goodness, you've got somebody here, and you don't know what to have them do. You should have the systems in place already before you even hire that assistant, so that whenever they come on board, you have an immediate thing." a list of things for them to actually do. And these are the things that you don't need to be spending your time as the agent 
doing them. Offload those if you can afford it or whatever, you know, to a team member that will handle these. And if that team member leaves, you've got the instructions for the next team member. You don't have to re explain everything, like you said. And, or if they go on vacation on the 20th, you know, it, somebody else can pick it up that one time. And if you get it out of your mind, you know, that's just another place that will cause you to drop things through the cracks. And if you get it out of your mind, put it on a system in a workflow, it won't fall through the cracks. And that's the whole point of workflows. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, the other thing I wanted to point out on this, the editing this month, the newsletter is in terms of time, right? So if you, again, you want to think about, you don't want to put an activity on here to do a time consuming project every June 1st, if you know that that's the time where you're going to be busy, okay? So you wanna be intentional about the times and not schedule everything you know, right away and, and look at time management. And so we scheduled this for the 20th. And so this is kind of a fail safe. So if you're getting that email that says, hey, here's your code and you're assigning a task on the 20th to verify that you've downloaded it and also to remind you to edit it, then on the first of that month, when this task comes up to send out the newsletter, then that newsletter is ready to go and you can do it, okay? Too often agents are making too, um, great, like too high level of tasks, okay? Because if you just make a task that says send out a newsletter, what are all the things that come before that, right? Where do you get the newsletter? How do you download the newsletter? How do you edit the newsletter? And the likelihood of you never sending out this newsletter because it's too much stuff to do in one time is, is high. And so that's why you want to think about those things. You know, when are you updating your, your templates periodically? When are you, um, you know, refreshing your, your other or accounts or things like that? You want to think about the time associated with that and setting it up in a way that sets you up for success. Um, your holiday you template. Those, make sure, uh, maybe I missed it. I was also uh, messaging Sam on the uh, link to the AI message um, or webinar, make sure you under, help them understand the repeating part of a assigned date. So mm -hmm. um, on the schedule, you put January 1st, 2023, mm -hmm. knowing that if it's past that date, what's gonna happen? Yeah, sure. Sense. So with the repeating monthly, I've told the system, that I want this task to repeat monthly. And another thing, as you saw, when I did the repeat, and I'll get over to what you're saying, but I'm gonna tangent for a second. That's right. Notice when you select the repeat style, monthly, weekly, you're given different selections, okay? If I do weekly, it wants to know, do you wanna do it on certain days of the week? If and I'm doing it on monthly, I have the decision, do I wanna do it on a day of the month or a day of the week? And so when the system generates this task, if it generates it on a Tuesday, it's always gonna repeat it once a month on a Tuesday, but maybe it's more important that I really do get this on the first of the month and then I get it on the first of the month um, going forward. For tasks like this, that this one's saying, send it us out January 1st, um, and that date could potentially be past due. A couple things that you could do. If I were going to launch my agent branding workflow this month or something like this, I could come in here and I could change this date. Um, let's just say that I wanted to um, have this ready for, I had to think about what month it was, um, for July 1st, okay? I could say, put this date in the future. However, you have kind of a fail safe because at the top of this, um, workflow, when you're creating the basis of this, you have this past activity option. And there's a few things here. By default, it skips past due. And so if this task was due on January 1st and I have it selected to skip past due, then the system's going to think this needs to happen. Um, Mark, would that happen on the next month, the first, right? Correct. Well, yeah. the next next available month on the first. Right. So, yeah. you know, in, in, in this case, you've got it set for January 1st. Well, we're already in June. So it would not create a February 1st, a March 1st. It goes ahead and goes at this point, it would even go to July 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So skips past due is, is going to, is going to 
skip anything that would have been past due and just create the next upcoming time that it would, should be generating itself, which like Mark said was July 1st. Now allows past due would create January 1st, February 1st, March 1st. It would, the system would look at how you set that up recurring monthly starting when and allow those tasks to um, create themselves in which case you'd have to go in there and mark them off that you did it. Um, starts from next annual valid annual date. And so maybe this said 2022 or it was a year prior, it would actually speed up and, and go to the next annual date. Um, anything else on that, Mark? No, that's the main thing. And just even though you may assign an activity a given date and, and it has a year on there or, or a month and a day, um, we have built in feature functionality that it will especially if the repeating activity, it will jump to the next available date in those cases. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to leave a little bit of time for questions. Um, like I said, we're giving you that agent branding workflow today. Um, the point is, is that I can't think of a situation where an agent wouldn't need an agent branding plan, right? Yours is going to look different than mine. And it's something that, um, you know, if you started as an agent yesterday, does it have to be up and running tomorrow, but it's something that you should really be thinking about. It's one of those things that's going to ensure your long term success. And it's also going to make sure that those cycles that you go through are more evenly killed because it puts intention behind what you're doing and when you're doing it. Um, so, you know, again, I've said this before, there's no shortage of things that we can work on in your business and real estate. And so if you're looking for somebody to work one on one with you, just reach out to me um, or sales, sales at Realvolve or Kendra at Realvolve. Um, we have, you know, weekly programs for three months, bi-weekly programs for six months, a go at your own pace program. We have workflow audits if you already have things going that could need improvement. Um, so if, you know, if you're in need of assistance or workflows or, you know, you have questions on, on our offerings, just feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Um, in the future, coming up next, we're going to be talking about building a team. And so what does that look like? What are the best practices? What are the steps? And what do you need to do inside of Realvolve? We're going to talk about automation in your business. And so everything that we talked about today, uh, branding, transactions, listing, contact management, are they automated in a um, intentional way? And we're not just sending people, um, you know, email blasts every three days without thought and consideration into moving them through a funnel so that they just unsubscribe from us and they're gone. Um, we're going to look at using our Google add-on sheet for reporting and what that can do to get you some additional context on statistics. Um, and then leveling up your contract to close processes. As always, if you guys have additional topics or, um, or things that you would like to cover, just let us know what those are and we're happy to incorporate them. We're also going to continue to do our Q&As probably monthly um, to give you opportunity for those things that, you know, that we're getting commonly asked or so that you can ask the questions that are they're relevant to you right now. Um, when you're logged into the system, take a look at that black bar at the bottom, several help options. Your how do I is kind of a walkthrough. So if you click on that and type in set up a signature, it will give you step by step instructions on how to do that. Your support us, submit a support ticket is if you see something in your system that's just not quite working right. Your help button is a searchable database so that you can um, look through previous um, posts and questions that other people have had. And our contact is here on the right is a chat during man chat hours. Um, you can ask those questions to a live rep. Um, like I said, we're giving you that agent branding workflow. So if you'd like that installed into your account, put your Realvolve email address into the chat and we'll make sure that that gets um, downloaded for you. And then I want to leave the last 10 minutes or so and see what questions we have, um, whether it's on anything we covered today or otherwise, we'd be happy to answer those for you guys. And I did put the webinar link in the chat area, if you scroll up, there is a, I also added the kind of the description of what we're doing on that, just um, making sure that everybody knows what that's about and when you guys can register for it. It sounds good. Any questions, Mark? I do not see any questions. You either covered it really well or everybody's asleep. One of the two. Everyone take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> No, very, very good content. Any questions? Uh, Bobby says, yes, add the branding workflow. Okay.
you know, with branding, with content, like I said, um, even if you were to look at your existing brand, if you if you think, oh, well, you know, I've I've got branding in in order, you know, everything is the way it it should be. There is absolutely no reason why you couldn't go in there and at least refine it. Make sure that it actually says, you know, <laughs> make sure you check your team members on your on your website. Are they still, you know, active agents in your team or or whatever? Um, the call to actions, the things that really draw those leads in, could certain pieces be added or rephrased or whatever. And that's a, a powerful point of what AI can do for you in the event that you are unsure of certain things or you know want to be able to um, enhance your existing website content. You know, with with ChatGPT, particularly I mean, with trillions of data points that they are trained on, they've seen all the websites out there. They can look and compare what you've got versus what other people have and be able to offer potentially much better um, content ideas and uh, just enhance, you know, you can check sentiment on, on things and, and we'll be discussing that more tomorrow, but branding is so important to, like I said earlier, to, to smooth out those ebb and flows, those, those ups and downs that constantly happen. I just, you know, in the 33 years of doing this with, with agents, it just amazes me how many people say the same thing about, you know, I'm, it's either feast or famine. And a lot of times it's just because they don't have their processes in place. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and Tracy. I just wanted to reiterate on that. You know, you're really just check where you're at right now. If the idea of like setting up, you don't have the time right now to set up your, your branding or your, even to think about it, then you probably should be looking at your processes, your systems that you have in place to manage your current set of business so that you do have time to fit these things in. And if you have so much time on your hand that, you know, you're saying, I don't have that many things in in the wheel, in the, um, you know, transactions under contract or things like that, then you really want to take a look at why. Is it because it's the time of year? Is it because that, you know, you weren't doing things three to six months ago to put things in the pipeline now? And you know how can we fix that and and use some some funnel management there as well. So, yeah, yeah. Tracy asked it, and actually she just replied back. So that's good. Um, you know, how do I receive the branding templates? Just give us your address, your your real Volve login address, so we can link it to your existing account. Oh. Yeah, and we'll go in there and download that for you. Any other questions? And it doesn't have to be related to what we've talked today. If you've got other questions, we'd be happy to answer those as well. Going once, going twice. So. Sold. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for attending today. Thank you, Kendra, for once again, mm -hmm. giving us amazing content and uh, the information that you share weekly is just phenomenal and uh, usable. That's the one thing that a lot of times you get into a webinar and it's just not as usable. It's like, eh, it's kind of good information, but not actionable. And mm -hmm. what you're showing is really the actionable parts of what Realvolve can do and should do for the agents. And we appreciate that. Yeah. All right, everybody, uh, signing off until next week, and we will see you later. See you, everybody.